Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to take a slightly different approach to learning the coronary circulation. Um, a lot of times when you're learning coronary circulation, you're looking at an anatomical uh, picture of the heart. And when you're doing that, it can be easy to get lost in the details. So what I've done here is taken kind of a schematic approach to learning how the coronary circulation actually works. We're going to see where a lot of these arteries and veins originate from and ultimately uh, where the veins actually deliver blood back to the heart. Okay? So when we think about the heart, we have the aorta that comes off of the left ventricle. And hopefully we understand that the aorta is really responsible for the systemic circulation. It's responsible for delivering blood to the entire body. Okay, so assuming the left ventricle is kind of down here where my mouse is in the circle, the aorta comes off of that, and the initial part of it is that ascending aorta. Okay, uh, the ascending aorta then kind of curves around into an arch, which is termed the aortic arch or arch of aorta, and then it curves back downwards and runs inferiorly. This would be the descending aorta. And there's two parts of that. There's the descending thoracic aorta, or just thoracic aorta. Um, this is the part of the descending aorta above the diaphragm. Once it pierces the diaphragm, it becomes the abdominal aorta, which again, by definition, is still descending. Also remember, coming off of that arch of aorta, there's three large arteries. So the first one that comes off is the brachiocephalic artery. And then we have the left common carotid artery, and then we have the left subclavian artery. But actually, that brachiocephalic artery is not the first artery that comes off of the aorta. The first ones that come off are actually the right and left coronary arteries. These coronary arteries are responsible for delivering blood to the entire myocardium of the heart. If the heart loses blood supply, that causes infarcted tissue. That's basically a heart attack, which can kill you. So having these arteries supply blood to the heart tissue itself is extremely important. Now, the way that the coronary arteries deliver blood to the tissue of the heart is by giving off several major branches, as you can see here. Now, there's more branches than just this, but for a typical anatomy course, this is sufficient. So this is what we're going to talk about. First, the left coronary artery. The left coronary artery originates off of the left side of the ascending aorta, literally just millimeters above the aortic semilunar valve. Remember, that's the valve that controls flow of blood from the left ventricle into the aorta. So it's just millimeters above that valve. It comes off, and it gives off two major branches. Okay, so the first branch is the anterior interventricular artery. Now this name gives us a clue as to what it supplies. So it's anterior, it's on the anterior surface of the heart, but it's interventricular. That means that it courses between the two ventricles, the left and right ventricle. And so it runs really in that interventricular septum or anterior interventricular septum. And so it's gonna be responsible for providing blood um, a little bit to the left ventricle and also to some of the right ventricle. And then the left coronary artery is going to give off another branch called the circumflex artery. This is called the circumflex artery because it starts off mostly on the anterior surface of the heart, but it quickly courses around to the posterior surface of the heart and really supplies the left atrium and also the left posterior ventricle. Remember that left ventricle is very large. So it's going to get blood not only from the anterior interventricular artery, but also the circumflex artery on its posterior side. And there's also another artery that we haven't talked about uh, called the artery of the left ventricle, which is the major supplier of blood to the left ventricle, but it's on the anterior side as well. Now for the right coronary artery. This again is going to supply the right side of the heart. And the first branch that it gives off is going to be the right marginal artery. Okay, um, Sometimes this is just termed the marginal artery, but it's important to realize that there's both a left marginal artery and a right. So this one would be the right marginal artery because it comes off of the right coronary artery. This is a pretty small artery, and if you're looking at a model, it's easy to miss. But basically, it runs down the lateral wall of the right ventricle. So you can guess that this is going to be responsible for supplying the right ventricle with blood. 
As the right coronary artery continues, it's going to give off another one called the posterior interventricular artery. This one runs on the posterior surface of the heart, as you can tell, and it's also interventricular. So that means it's going to run down the posterior interventricular septum between the left and the right ventricle. And so it's going to be responsible also for supplying blood to both ventricles. So again, you can see the left ventricle also is going to get blood from this source as well, the posterior interventricular artery. Now again, are these the only arteries that branch from the coronary arteries? No, there's a lot of others. There's arteries that specifically supply the sinoatrial node and the AV node. There's an artery, like we said, that is specifically for the left ventricle. Uh, there's arteries that supply the atria specifically. Okay, These are just the major ones that we talk about in the typical anatomy course. But if you have a way to supply a structure, you have to have a way to drain the blood from that structure. So that's where the venous drainage comes in. So these are the coronary arteries. The veins are termed cardiac veins. So that's important to remember. These are not coronary veins. Some instructors like to throw students off with that. These are not coronary veins. They are cardiac veins. So there is a difference in naming. Coronary arteries, cardiac veins. And there's three major cardiac veins. Those are the middle cardiac vein, small cardiac vein, and the great cardiac vein. Now, as you could imagine, the small cardiac vein is the smallest and the great cardiac vein is the biggest. We'll actually see that uh, the size of those veins actually matches the artery or arteries that they drain blood from. Okay? Let's start with the middle cardiac vein. This is, of course, middle or intermediate in size. And it's important to remember that this one really is on the posterior aspect of the heart which makes sense given the artery that it drains blood from. It drains blood from the posterior interventricular artery. So if you remember the middle cardiac vein is on the posterior aspect of the heart, it shouldn't be too hard to remember the, that it drains blood from the posterior interventricular artery. Now the small cardiac vein is mostly on the anterior side of the heart. It's really on the far right side. And being small, it's going to have to drain blood from a small artery. Well, the smallest artery we saw was the right marginal artery. Remember I said it's easy to miss that one if you're kind of glancing over the heart pretty quickly. So the small cardiac vein drains blood from the right marginal artery. Then we have the great cardiac vein. This vein mostly exists on the anterior side of the heart, but as we'll see in a minute, there's a reason it actually partially courses onto the posterior side. Now the great cardiac vein is the largest, and that's because it drains blood from two arteries. The first one it drains blood from is the anterior interventricular artery. This is the component of the great cardiac vein that is also on the anterior side of the heart. Okay, And you can see it. The first artery it drains blood from is the anterior interventricular artery. So remember that anterior interventricular artery runs down that interventricular sulcus on the anterior side of the heart. So does one branch of the great cardiac vein, and it drains uh, that artery. Okay. Um, it's also worth mentioning that that other artery I mentioned, which sometimes is important, the artery of the left ventricle, that is also drained by a branch of the great cardiac vein. All right. Then we have on the posterior side of the heart that circumflex artery. Remember, it originates more on the anterior surface, but it quickly curves around. It circumflexes around to the posterior side of the heart. And another branch of the great cardiac vein drains that circumflex artery. Okay. Now, what you see here is the middle cardiac vein, small cardiac vein, and great cardiac vein all converge into one very, very large vessel. This is a vein. It's actually called the coronary sinus, and it exists on the posterior side of the heart. If you're looking at the posterior side of the heart, there's one vein that is severely engorged. It's really big and thick on the posterior side. That's the coronary sinus. And one way you can also tell it's the coronary sinus is you should be able to follow all three of these major cardiac veins, and they should all course back and merge into the coronary sinus. And the purpose of the coronary sinus is to allow a common drainage point for all of these cardiac veins. And that's important because the coronary sinus leads directly back into the right atrium. In fact, if you look inside the right atrium in a model or a picture, there's actually a hole in there, which is the opening of the coronary sinus. And so any blood that's drained um, by these cardiac veins will end up in the coronary sinus and then go directly into the right atrium. And remember that that right atrium of the heart is the chamber that's responsible for 
collecting deoxygenated blood. So it collects blood from the superior vena cava. It collects blood from the inferior vena cava, and then it also collects blood from the coronary circulation via that coronary sinus. Okay, so uh, I know we weren't looking at a true anatomical picture here, but hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of how the various vessels supply the heart and also drain blood and bring it back to the right atrium. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.